Welcome back. Uh, this is the third video of our lecture. Uh, so we'll pick up right where we left off, which I believe was the hard drive. Now, let's say at this point, you know, RAM is not an issue. You've got plenty, or you've closed down most of your programs, and your computer still feels like it's a little sluggish, a little slow. Well, one of the possible reasons could be the hard drive. So let's get into that a little bit. The hard drive. This is roughly what the inside looks like. Now you'll see there are disks, basically, otherwise called platters. And you have these little read-write heads that go in between each of these things. Now, it's made of magnetic disks and uses magnetic particles to store data. These disks spin around, and the head's going to go back and forth reading the data that's written on the disks. Now, there's a head inside each of these two, but nothing actually touches the disk. It's actually really, really close, but it's not allowed to actually touch. If it does touch, you'll hear like a clicking noise, and it'll be like click, 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 click. And if you start hearing that and your computer starts tremendously slowing down, you might want to back up as much as you can because your hard drive's about to fail. Now, a hard drive is a physical device. It has parts that move, and sometimes moving parts tend to malfunction. Now, this thing can spin at relatively high speed, uh, usually 7,200 RPMs, up to 10,000, uh, maybe a little faster, uh, but they can't really go much faster than that. Uh, reason being, well, they've tried. I mean, this technology is 50-something odd years old, uh, and they tried to keep it as long as possible. But the speed, honestly, is just not up to par with the rest of the computer system you know, capability. This used to be one of the fastest components in the computer. Uh, now it's the slowest. Uh, it's actually going pretty much the same way other things like floppy disks and stuff have went. Uh, eventually you won't see it anymore. There's new technology, there's better technology, uh, just not quite as large. The reason we still have these is because there's, there's a large amount of storage space available with it. Uh, but once, you know, the other newer technologies catch up with that, you probably won't even see these hard drives very often anymore. Now, eventually hardware can fail. Like I said, they're moving parts, things can break, uh, and maybe that's what happens to your hard drive. It's just old and getting raggedy and parts aren't moving quite the same way they used to, uh, so it can't read and write quite as fast. But let's say that's not the problem. Let's, let's start back when you first get your computer. When you first get your computer, the hard drive only has the basic programs on it that it came with. Everything else is completely free. You know, you just have your very, very basic stuff. Eventually, you're going to have to install some stuff on it, you know, things like that. Uh, so, of course, after some time, stuff's going to accumulate. You're going to download videos. You're going to you know, go visit web pages. You're going to install games and programs and various other things. So the hard drive eventually is going to fill up. Now it's not a major problem unless you just completely fill it up, but putting stuff on a hard drive is not a horrible thing. Uh, it can cause some slowdown depending, but one of the major problems is really when you delete stuff, more, than, more so than installing it. Now reason for that is you don't actually delete files. So let's say this right here represents what you see when you're looking at your files. This sign, you know, I have six folders, and I want to delete one of these things. Windows or Mac or whatever shows me these, and I say, I want to delete advice. It goes away. Now, the data itself did not go away. It's actually still there on the hard drive. The only thing that went away was the little sign that points to where it is. And that's what these are, basically. Little signposts that point to where that data is. The data is still around. Files can be recovered with the right software. You ever seen CSI or NCIS or anything like that? They open up a busted computer or, you know, someone who deleted all their files and they're like, we've got all the files rebuilt. We've seen all the stuff he's doing. Well, even if you delete stuff, it's still there. It doesn't go away. Now, eventually it can once you override it a certain amount of times, or enough. 
In fact, uh, the government actually has programs that rewrite a hard drive. Uh, if they're going to retire a computer, give it to another department, they use this program to rewrite a hard drive hundreds of thousands, if not more times, with just random junk. So you can't recover anything. Now, here's an example of how this works and how this is a problem. Let's say this is my hard drive. And I've got these programs installed on it. Uh, program A, B, C, D, E, F. All different sizes, and they're installed just like this. Boop, 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 boop. If I want to read program A, do you remember my disks that, I, that make up the hard drive? It spins, and it's all back-to-back -back right here. So it spins, it goes boop, and there is program A. It loads it up. Boom, program B. Boop, boom, program C, whatever it is I want. Now let's say I delete program B. I don't need it anymore. Now, as far as my computer is concerned, this is free space. Uh, as far as the hard drive data is concerned, that file is still there. Let's say I want to install something else. Program G. It's going to find the first available place to put it, which is right here. But let's say Program G isn't quite big enough to fit there. It'll put part of it there. And then the rest of it can go here. Now, this presents a bit of a problem after you've deleted and added more stuff and deleted and added more stuff. I'm going to have parts of programs here and here. So now, instead of reading from here to there and loading up the program fairly easily, I read from here to here, and that's only part of it. I have this, this has to spin around again until I find the next part. And then I load up the next part. So it takes significantly longer to load up my program because I have to go to multiple different places. Imagine if you had a bag of really anything, Legos or something, and you want to build something with it. You have a bag sitting right there with all the Legos you need. You start pulling them out and putting it together, right? They're all in one place. What if I just threw them all across the room? You know, one in this corner, one in that corner. If you still wanted to build the same thing, you're going to have to go all over the place to go get it. It's the same concept here. Now, what this is called is fragmentation. Now, when you have a file that goes back to back, it's contiguous. When you have parts of a file scattered here and there, it's called fragmentation. Every computer will eventually kind of get this. Uh, the newer hard drives actually automatically correct this because they're so fast they can't. Uh, older hard drives, you have to run software to do it. So how do we fix it? What is this software that we can use? Well, it's called defrag or defragmentation. Uh, I know Windows certainly has it. I don't haven't used Mac really enough to say, but I'm pretty sure it probably does. Uh, but this allows you to check your system, and it will find places where these files are not back to back and start rearranging them. It takes a little bit of time, but it will actually put things a little more in order. Uh, if you haven't ever run this utility, you probably should, or at least check, and it will tell you how badly fragmented you are. And this will make that uh, slowdown on the hard drive a little less noticeable. Another reason for the slowdown, let's say your hard drive is fine, you've defragged, or it's brand new-ish time. Whenever you buy a computer, it is basically like a snapshot in time. It is as good as it's going to be that day you bought it. And all the software that's made is made for pretty much the newest computers. So let's say, for example, my bought a computer. It is way better than these other computers when I bought it. And all the software I want to download and install runs perfectly great. I can max out everything. So programs are made for newer computers. But let's say after some time, a new computer C comes into play. It's better than your computer. Now your computer is not as good. Computer C is now the best computer. Programs are made for the newest computer. So even though your computer may still be in good shape, may have plenty of RAM, may not have any you know, software or hard drive problems, after enough time passes, all the programs are made for those newer computers. 
So when you try running them, your computer feels like it's slower because the programs require way more. Uh, so it's not necessarily that your computer is slower, it's just that everything else is demanding more. So how do you keep from, you know, your computer from falling behind? Obviously, you could spend more money. Uh, you really do get what you pay for. If you buy a $100 machine, you're going to get a $100 machine that's probably, honestly, not even good for right now. Uh, but it will die very quickly and probably not be able to run as much stuff in a year or two years, even if you're only doing minimal stuff with it. You spend more money, and it doesn't have to be an excessive amount. Uh, you'll get a much better computer that'll last longer. Uh, you can also upgrade. Install new parts. Uh, you install new parts and bam, all of a sudden your computer has higher capabilities. Uh, desktop is very easy to upgrade. A laptop, not quite as easy uh, because it's all built into one thing. Now, I think we're getting close to time, so let me check that. Poof.